What's going on, everybody? It's DadBot here once again. Um, as I said at the very end of the last episode, I kind of have to give a little bit of a speech here, so bear with me. Um, this is a pivotal point in the game, and I think a strong case could be made that it is the most pivotal point of the game, um, in that we're about to make a decision that directly impacts the ending, directly impacts what areas of the game we're going to get to explore or not explore. Um, and so I'm going to uh, explain this as quickly as possible. So um, we're about to make a decision that if we choose one path, we fight some bosses, and then that is the end of the game. Um, and then if we choose the other path, uh, the, the fight a boss, a different boss, and the game continues. And there's an entirely new air area. There's more bosses, much more to do, much more to explore. Um, if you want the Platinum Trophy, you have to do both paths. Um, and, and you can't just, you know, do one path, reload your save, and then do the other path and get all the trophies. Because in order to get all of the trophies, one of them is having all memories in your possession, I believe. And the an only way to do that is to choose one path and see the game through to the end, whichever one that may be. And then on your new game plus, reloading that same save file, to then choose the other path to have to basically have all of the boss boss memories in your possession at the same time. And that get, that unlocks one of the trophies. So you have to do at least a new game plus to uh, to, to unlock the trophies, all of the trophies for that reason. Um, and so. Uh, what I'm going to do in this walkthrough is I'm going to show you both paths. I'm going to show in this episode, I'm going to show the uh, the early ending path first. And then in the next episode, I'm going to show the continue the game path. If you're playing this game for the first time, I would recommend um, doing the full game path uh, the first time, just because I think that gives you the best first uh, time experience through the game. Um, but you can do whatever you want. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to sneak up and I always try to sneak up behind this guy and get the death blow because why not? Um, so to, to activate this sequence, we have to go where we fought Genichiro, which we're going to do in just a second here. The divine heir and Lady Emma, they're being targeted. Can I ask you? Oh, come on. All right, well, that conversation's over. Um, so, up here, triggers a sequence. I remember you well. I heard stories of your death, yet here you are. What are you plotting, Al? Plotting? I would do no such thing. Now, my lord, I must ask that you accompany me. This old bird has but one desire. To protect the divine heir from those that might take his esteemed blood. So, the dragon's heritage has seduced you too. And there is nothing to discuss. Take your leave. I would, my lord, but... I'm so stunned by this view. I'd like to take it in just a while. I'll leave when I've had my fill. So yet another wrinkle to the plot. Turns out that Owl, our adoptive father, is uh, on his own selfish quest to uh, acquire the, the dragon's heritage. Father, to think you were still alive. That was my design. But the same could be said for you. I was certain you died that night. The power of the Divine Heir brought me back. That's it. What? The Divine Heir's power. The Dragon's blood. Must be mine. Father. Now you see it. Remember the first rule of the Code. 
As your father, I order you to forsake your master. From this moment, he is your master no more. Forsake the divine heir. Listen to me, Wolf. Obey your father's command and forsake the divine heir. So, this is our choice. If you remember from the beginning of the game, uh, Al said, if you know, he's referring to the Shinobi Code, saying that, you know, the father's will uh, is supreme, and the next is his lord's will. So he's telling me to forsake Kuro and join him, kind of like uh, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker almost, like, join me in the dark side. Um, so a little bit of a plot twist here. So we can obey the Iron Code and forsake Kuro, Kuro, or we can break the Iron Code and stay loyal to Kuro. So obeying the Iron Code, this actually triggers one of the game's four endings. So if you choose this, you're going to fight two bosses. And arguably, I, I, I would say this is probably the hardest fight in the game. It's actually two fights back to back, but you don't have a chance to recover in between. And back to back, it's probably the, uh, the hardest fight in the game. Um, it took me hours on my first try to, uh, to get through it. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, with using this walkthrough, it will help you not uh, suffer through the same uh, process that I had to go through. Um, so we're going to break, or, or actually, no, excuse me, we're going to obey the Iron Code and trigger this ending. And then the, in the next episode, we're going to go through this again and we will break the, epi break the Iron Code in the next episode. So... Without further ado. As you command. In accordance with your father's word, you will forsake the divine heir. You understand now, don't you? Yes. The code is absolute. I hereby forsake my master. The divine heir. I expected no less from you, my boy. With this, our supreme reign will... <sighs> it seems we have a troubling guest. But to oppose the daughter of the late Lord Doga would be quite the insult. Disgrace! My, my. Not bad at all. Wolf, I leave this to you. Have at it. Tear her apart. Sir. I have witnessed Shura once before. The very same stirs inside of you. As such, you must be destroyed. Okay. So real quick before we get into this boss fight, um, you may notice uh, this this uh, path that we just chose leads us to what is known as the Shura ending, or the as most people refer to it as the uh, as the bad ending of the game. Um, reason being is because this path basically we're giving in to our inner demon who has basically been fed by all the killing that we've been doing, and um, you know remember when we talked to Emma before she said that. Uh, she would only uh, fight to kill under one circumstance, and that was under if, if she saw someone giving in to Shura. Um, and so she, uh, we're gonna have to fight to kill her, and there's gonna be one more boss after her, so try not to expend all of your resources. She has some very powerful attacks, including a grab attack that just does devastating damage, so just be on the lookout for that grab attack. I'll try my best to kind of explain what's going on during the fight without getting myself killed, but we'll see what, what happens. All right. So, without further ado, let's fight Emma. And again, as, as you could possibly uh, guess, aggression is your best bet in this fight. Um, oops, and I'm not doing a very good job. So when she does, when she puts her sword into her hilt, 
Oh gosh, that was bad. When she puts her sword into her hilt, she's going to do that cross slash attack. Um, I normally would successfully run away from it. Um, and uh, that gives you a chance to get some hits in. So um, just a couple things to be on, on guard for. Uh, so there's, there's her sword attack. It's better if you run to your right, um, to your right and her left when doing that. And sometimes you can get behind her and get a couple uh, shots in for damage. Um, so uh, let's see, I'm going to need to concentrate. You can do some Akiri counters. So I'm going to be light on the commentary going forward in this fight. That combo leaves her open to an attack if you block everything. She's susceptible to firecrackers, although I don't recommend using firecrackers a too terrible, uh, too terribly much during this fight because you're going to want them in the next fight too. And that was her grab attack that she just uh, murders you with uh, that I dodged a, f a few seconds ago there. Um, carry counter. So run away, run to your right get behind her and you can get a couple shots and whenever you see her put her sword in her hilt like that that's her grab attack that's a good good opportunity to get some hits in as well and she's almost gone so you actually have control i equip an Akko sugar and a divine confetti right here while you have control during this little cutscene because it basically buffs you up and gets you ready for the next fight good little strategy for that You are a most unkind and inauspicious man. But for some reason, I could not bring myself to hate you. It seems I must cut you down before you fall to Shura. Okay, a little bit about this fight. It takes place in two distinct phases. Phase two is very different from phase one just in terms of his abilities and attacks. We'll get to that when we get there. Um, the key again with him, as with, you know, Genichiro, as with Emma, is to stay on him. Don't let up. Don't let him recover his posture. Always be on guard, ready to block. He has the same move that uh, Emma has where he kind of puts his sword into the hilt and then he charges up to do like a quick cross slash type move. Um, and you're able to dodge that in just the same way we dodged it against Emma. It's basically to run backwards away from it and then also circle around to your right and to get behind him and get some shots in. Um, also, um, firecrackers uh, work well in this fight. I, I recommend saving them more so for the second phase of the fight. Um, and really, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of learning his attack patterns and kind of developing the reflexes to counterattack them. He's, he's very, this, is, this could be the most difficult boss in the game, honestly. Um, and so I don't want to do a whole heck of a lot of talking. One thing is, is if you try to heal, he's going to counterattack you. Um, so one way that I sort of uh, get around that is I'll throw firecrackers before healing. So that way when he charges at you, he actually runs into the firecrackers and stuns himself. And then that way you get your heal off without getting punished severely. Um, also attack buffs, divine confetti, uh, Akko sugar is your friend in this fight. Hopefully you manage to you know maintain a lot of your resources from the previous fight, from your uh, gourd pouch and your pellets and you'd have ample opportunity to heal. Um, I'm going to do minimal talking during this fight just because it does require so much concentration, which is why I'm just, I've just paused the game and just kind of explained everything up front. Um, good luck. This fight is tough. Um, hopefully I'll get this first go. We'll see. Um, but anyway, without further ado, here is Ishin.
Oops, I did Divine Confetti. I meant to heal there. See how he charges? I should have thrown Firecrackers to demonstrate. Um, there's his cross attack. You can get around behind him, get some shots in. So there's his grab attack. Very similar to Emma, has a grab attack. So throw Firecrackers and heal. Be ready to Makiri counter. Ooh, there's a scrap attack. Ichimanji, you can dodge that. I didn't do it successfully there, but oh well. Almost got first phase down. Eee, let's not die though. <laughs> I should have I should have thrown firecrackers, but he didn't chase after me. That's good. There we go. First phase down. Second phase is fire. He has fire attacks. Um, first thing, throw firecrackers right away, because otherwise he's going to charge up into a very powerful fire attack that's very hard to dodge. Um, and so anytime you see him charge up like that, you're going to want to hit him with firecrackers. Otherwise, he's going to hit you massively. And a lot of his just regular sword attacks have fire attached to it. See that turret that where he's charging up right there? You want to throw your firecrackers, because he will hit you with a massive fire attack. So every time you see him, he kind of grunts. He kind of grunts, and he has burn type attacks, unfortunately. Um, so anytime you see him do that kind of charge, he's sort of grunting, you want to throw firecrackers right away because you don't want to be on the receiving end of that attack. So we're going to use some dousing powder to get rid of our burn. And he always likes to punish healing type moves. So I'm going to throw some firecrackers again and heal up. And so that stuns him for a second. Um, the Ichimanji attack, I run around to his backside and get some hits in. Um, all right, so Firecracker, that move. That's his charge up move. Run around behind him for the Ichimanji and get a hit in. But he punished that, of course. Um, oops, I should have, I should have deflected there. I'm going to throw in some confetti. Hopefully, uh, oh. Ah, that was, I was way too greedy there. Oh, good grief, that was greedy. All right, I need to, I'm running out of firecrackers, so I just decided to heal without throwing firecrackers. Oh, I'm getting way too greedy. Good grief, I'm getting way too greedy. This might cost me. See, uh, I, I, he will, he will charge after you if you don't throw firecrackers. Um, Oh, geez, there's his fire. I might be dead here. So when he does that, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's see how powerful that attack is. Um, I'm going to throw some firecrackers into a pellet. See how he just ran right into those firecrackers? It's just kind of preemptively anticipating his attack because he punishes healing. There we go. Got him. Sweet. First try. Whew. Don't forget that death blow. I tried my best just to show you his attacks and how to counter them, but he is whew, easier said than done. He is difficult. All right, and we get a memory. And we acquire a skill, one mind. This is the Shura ending of the game. That took a while. But it was well worth the wait. Despite his age, few could hope to defeat a man such as Ishii. Nothing stands in our way. Ashina, the interior ministers. The whole country is ours for the taking. I, the Prince 
Soldiers and town folk alike died by the thousands. Very few survived. Ashina became the setting for the most tragic massacre of the Sengoku era. And for a long time after, it was said a demon lurked the land.
Okay, so that was the Shura ending. Um, so this game gives you a a choice as to whether or not you want to start your second playthrough or often referred to as New Game Plus immediately. If you choose not to, um, you're going to respawn, I believe, at the dilapidated temple and you can you know, roam around the world. There's no going back on the choice you made to do the sure ending, though. There's no, no going back and then just automatically choosing the other path right then and there, even if you do not choose to start your second playthrough immediately. Um, what's done is done. But... Um, at least if you you know you want to get some items or if you want to grind for some stuff before starting your new game plus, you're absolutely free to do so. Or you can just hit yes, and you will uh, be you'll you'll just start straight into um, to your new game plus. So as you could see from the uh, Shura ending, we uh, turned our back on everybody. Al thought we were on his side. We were not. We had at that point been overcome by Shura, and uh, we were on an unstoppable path of destruction at that point in time, especially since we did what our friend the sculptor could not do, and we got through Ishin and uh, took him out as well. Um, so that is what's known, uh, what we're commonly referred to as the bad ending of the game. I mean, you be the judge. Uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. It is interesting to see just how that side of, you know, the, the potential... Um, outcome or different time, potential timelines uh, plays out. I'm glad they threw that in the game. I think it kind of helps um, flesh out uh, some of the elements of the lore that had been discussed uh, earlier in the game and just puts uh, puts some teeth on it, makes it feel, um, makes it feel like reality. Um, but anyways, I, I don't suggest taking that path the first time through the game because you are cutting out probably about one third or one fourth of the game by doing so. Um, I do suggest taking the other path during your first playthrough, but of course the choice is yours to make. So let's see, it gives you a warning. We'll not be able to return to the current playthrough upon starting playthrough number two. Um, so very similar to Dark Souls and Bloodborne. If you're familiar with From Software, you start the new game plus, you are stronger, of course, because you have enhanced vitality, you have enhanced attack power, you have abilities that carry over, <clears throat> excuse me, from playthrough one to playthrough two. However, your enemies also scale up in difficulty, so it's not all one-sided. It's not just you're more powerful and you're just going to be able to roll over everybody you encounter. The bosses are going to be scaled up, the so normal enemies are going to be scaled up. After this school. is just the uh, opening cutscene, and here we are. So, you'll notice that we just got an item called Kuro's Charm. Um, that is a unique item that only uh, you only obtain during your second and subsequent playthroughs. Um, let's see, can I, can I uh, access Kuro's Charm from the menu? There it is. So it's a charm received from Kuro, placed on the wolf's person in secret after he lost his life in the Harada estate and gained the power of resurrection. The charm has protected the wolf well, tempering his ordeals. To part with it would mean facing a path of hardship beyond that endured thus far. So <clears throat> you have the Kuro's, you, well, you, you've always had the Kuro's charm, but in, in subsequent playthroughs after your first playthrough, um, whether it be your second time, third time, fourth time, or beyond, you are going to start with Kuro's charm in your inventory. And then actually when you first meet Kuro, you're going to have the opportunity to give it to him, meaning return it to him and play the rest of the game without it. Um, similar to the Demon Bell, this makes the game harder. Um, by, but it doesn't make it harder just by scaling up the difficulty of enemies even higher than they already were. What it does is it makes it so, unless you, if you're blocking, unless you get a perfect deflect, if you're just blocking, if you're just holding L1 to maintain a defensive posture um, and you just take hits, uh, previously, you would receive no damage. You would only receive, or you, you'd receive no damage to your vitality. You would only receive damage to your posture. Well, if you choose to give Kuro's charm back to Kuro when he asks for it, or when he asks if you want to give it back, or whatever he says, um, you actually will receive a small amount of damage um, by holding just a defensive posture. You will not take damage if you get a perfect deflect, but if you just hold the block button and maintain a defensive posture and just take the hits, instead of taking only posture damage, you're also going to take some damage to vitality as well. Not as much damage to vitality as you would if you were just taking the hits open, but you will take damage to, to vitality by, by blocking without getting a perfect deflect. So that does make the game harder, as you could imagine. Um, and, uh, you know, the choice is yours and yours alone to make uh, if you want to give it back to him or not. 
Um, and you know, while you're at it, might as well ring the demon bell too. Um, so anyways, that's about it. Uh, you know, with the Shura ending, as I said, in the next episode, I'm going to choose the other path and, um, we're going to proceed with the rest of the game, um, as normal. So, uh, that's that. Thanks for sticking with me here through the Shura ending. I hope you enjoyed it and, um, I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.